Hi, this is Derek from LiveWatch. Today I have a treat for you. This is sent in by my customer Chris from Florida. We actually chatted on the phone for like 15-20 minutes. Such a nice guy. The story behind this build is he's always a Casio guy and this time he really wants a nice mechanical watch. Instead of buying a Seiko SKX and got everything out, he went on Crystal Time and purchased all these parts. I will say he got a very nice selection here. The Helium Escape Valve SKX case is definitely a winner here. I really like it. Before we get started, I would like to examine all the parts before I put it together. So if there is any manufacturing defect, we still have a chance to exchange with the manufacturers. After I check all the parts, now it's time for installing. I was very amazed by the cleanliness of this part because it was very dusty. I don't know what's wrong with Crystal Time on this case. Normally when I receive stuff from Crystal Time, it was very clean. But in this case, the case was pretty dusty. I'm not feeling comfortable to put in like movement and everything in there without cleaning it at first. After a thorough radical clean, I'm now more confident to install the watch now. The first step will be the case preparation. I will install the chapter ring. After I installed the chapter ring, you can see the tolerance, it's pretty big. This is not acceptable. Because the chapter ring can still spin around freely in the case, they will cause misaligned chapter ring. And Chris actually sent over a bottle of contact cement, so I decided to use that and dab a few little tiny dabs along the case so it can hold the chapter ring down. And then I'm using my spare SKX movement to align the chapter ring. Now the movement are installed and aligned to the case. I'm dabbing a tiny bit of contact cement to the case now and we can install the chapter ring. Normally I won't recommend to use any type of glue inside the movement but this is just moving too much. Before I can install the glass and the case back I need to let it dry for at least two hours just to make sure it's fully dried and we are not trapped in any solvent inside the case. While we waiting for the case to dry, I think this is a great opportunity to use my time grapher to measure how's the performance of this movement because Chris actually bought this pre-regulated from Crystal Time. I'd like to see actually how they regulate the movement.
we can see on the facing up position the daily rate is 14.1 second plus and the amplitude is around 270 i would say a healthy cycle movement is around 260 to 70 so this is acceptable and the beat error it's around 0.1 i would say anything beneath 0.3 it's acceptable now we are looking at the facing down position, the rate is 5.1 seconds per day plus and then the amplitude is also 260 to 70 ish and the beat there is 0 millisecond is actually quite good. And now we are looking at the most important position which is 6 o'clock up. Why is this is the most important because when you wear your watch and when you are like doing something in your office, you are sitting down uh, typing keyboards, the six o'clock is always facing up. As you can see, the rate is fairly flat. It's plus and minus, I would say two seconds and the amplitude is a bit low, it's like 240. Considering this is a brand new movement, it might do better over time. And then the beat error is 0.2. I would say this is acceptable. Do I think if it's worth it to get a pre-regulated movement? I think the answer is yes, because not everybody have a time grapher at home to verify. Because we are still waiting for the chaptering glue to dry, so I decided to continuously work out the movement. In this step, we are changing the day wheel from an English-Chinese version to an English-Spanish version. And I will install the dial and the hands. This step is very crucial. I'm turning the date over so it indicated midnight. A shameless plug here. I actually designed this 3D printed watch hand press. There will be a link in the video description if you are interested. Or if you need a printout of this design, please write me an email. Thanks. When I gluing down the chapter ring, I also apply a tiny bit of glue on this glass. Now you can see the glass is fairly dry, so we can go ahead and finish the case. Yes, I do know there's still dust underneath the glass and the hand blower just not doing a good job. So I using a loop and radical off camera 
to carefully remove all the dust. Now I'm using a crystal press to press down the crystal. This step has to be very careful because it's a double dome sapphire crystal. So there is not a flat surface you can reference to. In this step, I will check multiple times the left and right and front and back. The crystal edge have to be even. Pressing crystal in, you need to take baby steps. You need to press a little, turn the case, press a little and turn the case and always check for the level. After you turn and press multiple times, you will feel the crystal will not go any further. And then also check for level again to see if it's leveled and the job is done. After we install the crystal, it's looking pretty good. You can see from left to right, it's quite even. And then from a different angle, Again, from left to right, it's also very even. We've done a very good job here. Now the next step will be I will removing my movements and I will install the case back, the case back gasket and the crown. Now I'm using the speed lubrication to lubricate the case back gasket. This is my wet water pressure tester. So how this thing work is I will hook the watch on the hook up there and then pressure the vessel up to five atmosphere. That's equal to 50 meters of water resistance. For 10 minutes, if there is a leak, the air will have a chance to leak into the watch case and balance the pressure. After I dump the watch beneath the water, I will slowly release the pressure if there is a tiny steady stream of bubble coming out of the watch case means the water seal is totaled.
we are only seeing few bigger bubble coming out. Those are considered normal because there is always air gap track beneath the mechanism or in the spring bar or in some hole in the case. So that's fine. We didn't see any steady bubble coming out. So it passed the water test. Now it's time to marry the movement to the case. I will open up the case back, install the movement, and align the movement to the chapter ring. Previously, I aligned the movement to the case and aligned the chapter ring to the movement so we have a point of reference here. Now we just need to align the new movement to the chapter ring. After a series of minor adjustments, I'm now very satisfied with the alignment. So we're gonna to move to the next step. In this step, I will use my original SKX stem and crown assembly to use it as a point of reference so we can trim down the new stem to the correct dimensions. As you can see, I already tallied the result from the original measurement. We need to take away 9.16 millimeters. I will always cut a little bit more than the dimension we need and use a diamond file to file it down to the correct dimensions. So I'm comparing the dimensions to the original reference again and I'm very happy about the results. Now it's time to lock tight it down. I'm using the Mobius 9501 to lubricate the stem so the keyless work can work properly.
after I loop and install the stem, clean the case back and movement. Now I also re-loop the case back gasket again. Now it's time to case the watch. Now I'm installing the bezel click spring, the bezel, the bezel insert, and also using the contact cement to glue down the bezel. This is actually requested by Chris. Normally I would use a 3M adhesive specially designed for this application, but we discussed it through the email and finally he decided to use contact cement. I'm using the press again to press down the bezel. Now I'm applying contact cement on the outer ledge of the bezel. Before the glue dries, I'm using Q-tip with alcohol to clean away the excess glue. After I wait for the glue to dry for another two hours, I put on this leather NATO strap on the watch and take some photo shots. I will say this strap looks very good on this watch and I'm not using this strap anymore so I'm giving it to Chris. Now I'm wrapping up the watch with protection film and it will be ready to ship. I have to say I'm really enjoy on working on this Crystal Time custom watch. All the parts are handpicked by Chris and this is a totally different experience from what I'm used to do. I will try to do more of these videos soon. And if you find this video educational and enjoy to watch, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you for the support. This has been Derek from Live Watch. See you next time. Bye.